It's story time, it's story time, yeah. What's your favorite scary movie? Welcome back to Jesse's Story Time Spectacular. I'm Jesse. You know I love y'all. So just wanted to say what's up. Chillin'. Ghostface t shirt. Let's do this. Alright, Scream 6 with the numer numeral. Alright. So we're going to be following everybody as they ship off to New York for college. This sounds a little familiar like Scream 2, right? But no, they actually took it to New York. Great setting. Because this was just perfect, crazy hunting grounds, as we could call it for pretty much uh, the entire production of this film. I mean, they really used the New York setting well. I know every single person was already saying this, so a lot of what I'm going over right now, I'm going to try to speed through because I'm sure you've watched a ton of other stuff that's pretty much already said everything that I'm going to say about this film. Pretty quick. So... Yes, this is a very different screen flick. You know, no real formula like before, except sort of like before. They kind of were trying to do that switcheroo with ya. And it's fun. Uh, I have no complaints. Only a few, but, you know, those are just minor. I mean, this was a very solid 9 here. 9 out of 10. I, I don't give that to a lot of flicks. Not much at all. Uh, but this was impressive, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people could say that before, but this one really took the Scream sequels to a high, high level. I mean, very, very high level. We, uh, we're talking all the brutality, everything, all the creative kills, uh, pretty much constant swapping up who you think the killer could be, uh, all these different theories going on already within the film between all the different groups of people. All the wonderful characters, which I'm about to get into. That's my favorite part. Is just the characters make this film. You guys... Uh, I mean... You know you're not going to get Sydney. She's... They even explain it right off the bat. I'm sorry I'm going to spoil it, but... The girl is just getting some damn peace with her family which she deserves so let's give it to nev campbell on this one you're making the right move with all the bullshit you had to deal with too and you played it well you did what you needed to do and you stood up for yourself i'm proud of you girl now the movie itself. Wow. I mean, just walking out of that theater, everybody, I, I had, uh, I mean, maybe 18 people in that theater. And when I walked outside, uh, there was still maybe 10 of them all outside strangers talking. I mean, they were not sitting together. They were not talking together during the film. They were not associated. They were all different age groups. Everybody. That's what I loved about this. It brought people together. Yes, a slasher flick. Bringing people together. No, no Santa Claus, no holiday, whatever, whatever, whatever. This 
was a screen flick that everybody wanted a whodunit that would be weird, different, and not of the same run-of-the-mill screen film. So that's what we got, and I'm so happy that we got that. Just something different. Uh, the only part was, yes, I'm in the same field where the reveals, even though it plays with my fanboy love of the films, and that it's giving a little tribute with the whole family thing, you know, yeah, sorry, but this is a spoiler review, so fuck y'all, all right? You've seen enough spoiler-free reviews, but they just say next to nothing in them. So this has just become a spoiler review anyway. Screw you guys. Sorry. Anyway. So. Our new cast of characters is like, I want to say Anika. Um, what was that other chick's name? Uh, Quinn, which is their roommate. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, Dylan. Uh, he's the nerdy Jack Champion dude. Uh, I mean, he does a great job in that role, but, he, I mean, just... The whole time, I'm just annoyed at this guy. He's just so annoying. But they use that, so... Take it as you will. But... The best was just the best of this film was all about the core four, which they called it, of course, which I loved the little nerdy thing and Chad bringing it all up and him bringing everybody kind of together a little bit. I, I really enjoyed that. I think uh, we got to see a lot of personality come out of Chad in this film. Um even though everybody is obviously dealing with their own traumas in this film while everything is happening anyway, which is probably why nobody demanded, like, police protection constantly or anything convenient like that that you probably should have obviously been doing, but the cop was supposed to be suspicious even though he was my favorite of the killers. I'm sorry. When you were great out of those three killers, uh, they even though there were five killers in this film, I'll touch on that in a bit, but out of the actual reveal and the two killers that were dead, whatever, but the dad, Dylan whatever his name is, McDermott, or whatever. Uh, I think it was Detective Riley. Ow. I think they were paying due to the, uh, you know, Dewey reference, but they kind of, I don't know, something else like that. But uh, uh, Detective Bailey, I think, yeah. Yeah, but they were trying to play off of that, I think, you know. Doing the whole, you know, <clears throat> Dewey reference stuff. But anyway, he was a silver fox, and I'm loving it. The whole time, I'm just like, dude, just take your clothes off, please. Oh, my God. Just do me the favor. Send me the nudes, please. I mean, I want to see, like, the underwear ad of this guy right now. Come on. <laughs> But of course they gotta give me somebody in the Scream film that of course I can't sleep with, so you know. Maybe one day. Maybe. And I'm always hopeful. Always. Some of my favorite parts of this film... Pretty much everything that came out of Mindy's mouth. I mean, that Jasmine's Moon Brown was... Just, she shined in every little film part in any of this Scream stuff she was doing. Yeah, in 5, she was a little over the top. 
but this, she nails all of her stuff, and I do like the way that she carries herself in the film, especially with a little bit of dealing with a lot of shit. I mean, and I like how Chad has become this... Still trying to hang on to this scrap boy, Jack... Uh, you know personality but he's really falling into that sweetheart thing and oh my god the cute gushy thing was sick but Tara in that movie oh my god Chad and Tara I am all ta team Chad and Tara all team Chad and Tara like they are both so cute just uh, that scene just had me with the shit eating grit on my face of a 14 year old girl. It just was great. In terms of scenes, by the way, uh, I have to admit, I loved, I, I was, I was very happy with Kirby in this film. Even though she was very underused, I think that's going to come into play more in Seven, and they're going to give her her moment and her time to shine more. Okay? Because I know they're not bringing back Kirby back for just nothing. So, uh, I feel like Seven might have some Kirby vibes flying up in there. I'm, I'm hoping, because I, I love you, Kirby. You great. You my girl. I love Kirby. <laughs> She's the best. She's the, her spunk, her attitude, the spitting great horror lines, and rocking that girl power, horror chick. We love Kirby, and she's an FBI agent in this film, which is very interesting. She plays this very well, and it goes very well psychologically in the film, because obviously we do end up find out, finding out that she's not still an FBI agent, because apparently a couple months ago she had some sort of mental breakdown uh, about her past and all of the stuff with Charlie and her you know, Jill being her best friend and lying to her and actually being the killer and then Charlie stabbing her later when he think he was going to help her and then he was the killer. Oh my god. But then she lived. If she even got to describe it, she got to say something about how I think she said she lived, she died for about six minutes or something and then she was, you know, resuscitated and the EMTs got her and she made it, but uh, I'm just so happy to see Kirby back. I, even though she was underused in this film, the scene thing I, I'm referring to is her and Mindy are doing the horror movie talk. Now, I know they don't want this film meta. I get that. I, I, did, I know they were trying to brush away from that, and they wanted to make their own screen film. They did. In fact, they did. No worries. They did. But that talk needed to be more there. They needed to have sprinkle more of that in there. Because this, you know... Uh, even though Scream 5 had a little too much of it, and it was way too much in your face a little bit about the whole horror movie commentary, even though I, they they gave it some love, it, it did well with it. It would just... There were parts where it was just too overbearing into the script. But... Still, I loved it. <laughs> Just because I'm a Scream Super fan, and I, you know, I'd go on for days. But the New York shit was so much fun. 
I actually am regretting that I did not go to see it in 3D, so I'm thinking in the next couple of days, I think I might go do that tomorrow. Anybody want to go see it? Hit me up, comment, say something. We'll go grab some tickets, get some food. We'll see some scream. Oh my god. Yes, it was so good though. It was fun. I just didn't like all of the kill reveals. I felt like even when they did the reveals, it didn't feel like it was all really, you know, you already had figured out most of it anyway. But they had to do it. They had to make it feel dramatic. I got it. It's cool. But. They also just should have given us, a, like, a, you know, at least a chest shot of the cute cop. Come on. I know. I'm, I'm bad. I'm bad. I know. But. He's, Alright, and then, uh, still, yes, Chad should have died. I'm sorry. I know, but they're pulling what they're doing. I know I'm going to defend this because what they're doing, and I can see it from a mile away, and a ton of you Scream fans have been foolishly stupid to complain about this because, uh, I mean, we're in the sequel, sequel era. We're already in the way, we're past the requel. Come on! If you die, you don't really die. They can always write you back in somehow. Time travel, anything these days, it's got it like... I don't know. It's just, it's gotten... Weird. So, they'll come up with something. Alright? Even though he just got stabbed a million times, just like Dewey in the past. So, they're making him the new Dewey, and yes, he was a little father figure-y by kind of pulling everybody back together and being like, Core 4, we all cool, we're all awesome, but let's not get stabbed. So, Mason Gooding, uh, you are killing it lately. You have been a great character and bringing the character development more within the other characters, too. You did fantastic. So, mad props. Uh, you know, the twins in this film were great. Uh, I... Sam was wonderful, and then Tara, you could totally tell. He took everything that happened to her in 5 and just manifested it into this survival mode badass switch on off. And when she switches it on, she is badass. So, she is very scream, scream queen right now, Jenna Ortega. You are doing fantastic. Keep doing your thing, because you are doing wonderful. I loved you in X. You were awesome. Impressive. Smart. And you, you're... You've got the facial expressions and reactions down extremely well. I've got to give it to you, girl. Very well. So I'm giving a lot of praise to the cast to this. The cast, I mean, even though the writing team was amazing, and I, even though there were obviously some issues with some, you know, obvious conveniences that helped the plot push along and string things together, but... Most of all, I was pretty satisfied. I mean, I, yeah, the reveal got kind of boring, but at least it was different. And I loved how they used the beginning in a real sense to use a ghost face against a ghost face. 
awesome, 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 fantastic opening. Especially when he opens the fridge and the Greg partner is cut up in the fridge. Oh man, the look on his face was great in that. Really, really, really good. But, um, man, I could go on and on, but I'm telling you. I'm going to leave up a whole lot of the fan pictures and stuff that I found here at the end of this movie. This little film I'm making here. Because, you know, it's always got to be like my original screen film or something. I've always got to have a slash and gash motive. Because I'm Ghostface. I'm loving it. And at this point... We're in for Scream 7 coming. So. If you knew this. Got this amount of attention. Go see it. Somehow get a rental. Whatever. Just see the film. It's really, really fun. Enjoy some of this marketing stuff I'm going to leave up here because it was just fun to find a whole bunch of these photos. And some of it was fan art, I think. So uh, kind of interesting just how they did that. But uh, much love to you. This is Jesse from Jesse Storytime Spectacular. I love you all out there. But I'm going to check out here, because I have a feeling we're going to be revisiting Scream 6 pretty soon. Definitely. But I need to see it in 3D. You guys need to see it. Just go see it. And then tell me what you thought in the comments. I beg of you, because I'm dying to talk about the film with everybody else. Hear their opinions. They're what they think is going to happen on that, all the survivors and everything. I want to know you what you thought. Just so we can blab. Come on. Let's do this. Scream 6 was awesome. And yes, Dean Renner. I love you, homie. But... This was a good flick. Sorry. Ah. Alright, guys. Love y'all. I'm out. Skeet.